friends, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I have a long overdue trash talk slash like brush declutter to go ahead and show you guys. Um, I organized this in two different categories and I'll put timestamps down below in case you want to skip over something. I figured I would start with the brushes and makeup that I've either decluttered or um, have used up completely because that's kind of I think the most exciting thing that I found. There's a lot of stuff in here. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First things I have are some like just basic like couple time use samples. I used up the Makeup Forever Step One Hydrating Primer. Um, this is a little bit too much for my skin. I feel like if you are dry, this would be good for you, but it was just not the best for me. I also used the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. This was nice. If this ever becomes like 100 point perk from Sephora, I'd like to try it that way because this thing is mad expensive. I'm not fully sure it's worth the price tag. I'd want more uses to fully decide. Uh, I use the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. This stuff is great. I do own a full size of this. And then I have the Professional from Benefit. Again, a pretty good sample. Uh, I've had it a ton of times, but never been convinced to fully buy it. Um, I also have three foundation products that I've used. I have the L'Oreal Lumi Cushion. This was in W2, which is light ivory. I had like a love affair with this for a while, but I feel like I'm kind of over it now. Um, I don't know what that is, but I feel like this maybe oxidizes on my face. I have it on my face today, and I feel like it's a little bit darker than my natural skin color, but I'm just glad I used it. I also use the Maybelline Dream BB Pure 2% Salicylic Acid Light Sheer Tint. I kind of feel the same way about this. I used to be really obsessed with this and I do like the finish on my skin, but I feel like this one in particular oxidized on me and made me look a little bit darker. So I feel like in the summer, this would be a great one for me to use, but in my really light wintry months, it's probably not the best color match. The last one I have is the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous um, Foundation Plus SPF 20. This is 805, which is ivory, big fan of this. This. The pump on here is just so so. I feel like it's not the most effective, and I did have to pop off the top and like scrape product out of here. But as far as coverage goes, this to me is not um, the heaviest looking foundation ever, which I do like, um, and it has a decent amount of coverage. So I'm pretty pleased with it. Actually, already purchased it. It's kind of becoming a favorite real fast. We have a couple of concealers. I am getting rid of the e.l.f. Light Beige. I don't know why I bought this. I feel like maybe I saw just the word light and picked it up, but this is way too freaking dark for me, and I'm not gonna be able to use it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of it. Uh, I did, however, use up the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Dark Circle Eraser. This stuff is awesome. I use this in the shade Fair. I did rebuy this. It, to me, is just like the best under eye coverage for me. I used this a long time ago and then came across it again and re like repurchased it and just fell back in love with it. And now it's become like my absolute favorite must have concealer. I've gone through a few mascaras. I have the L'Oreal Voluminous Feline. This I feel like hasn't gotten a lot of favoritism or love on YouTube, uh, but I personally love this wand and this formula. I also don't have super finicky or difficult uh, or like unattractive bad lashes. So I feel like that's probably why I like this much because I don't really need or expect a ton from my mascara. So I would repurchase this, but I've got a lot of mascaras to still work through. Like I, I could probably do like a mascara no buy for a year and still have things left over. Uh, I used the Sephora Lash Craft Length and Volume uh, Mascara Sample. This didn't really um, wow me. I feel like I maybe got like a dud of a stopper because from the get go, I've had like chunks of mascara on here and it's just been difficult to get the right amount and not get too much. And I'm not somebody who wants to wipe off my brush or do any of that business. So I wasn't convinced to buy this. And then I'm getting rid of the Well People Expressionist Mascara. This from the get go was a dry mascara and I feel like it just like dried out on me super fast and didn't have much of an impact on my lashes. So I wouldn't buy this, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I've also used up the e.l.f. High Definition Under Eye Setting Powder. I'm literally going through this stuff like there's no tomorrow. I am in love with these. I just wish that they would come in a bigger uh, package. I don't care if it's the same amount of product, just like more surface area. That way I can pick up the powder a little bit easier and not have to constantly pat so much of it off because I have to like very like carefully dip it in and then pat it off. It's a lot of work. Um, so if I could maybe find a larger container to put this in, I probably would do that, but then I would maybe go through it 
quicker. Um, I also used up the Japanese Makeup Brush Cleanser in the Citrus Scent. Kind of over the Citrus Scent, but I did like this as a cleaner. I feel like I might get it uh, again if it was on an Amazon special and wasn't in this scent. Because it is pretty pricey compared to the e.l.f. version, but it took me a very long time to go through this. Oh, I have another mascara. This is the Lancome Hypnos Drama. I had this thing for forever. Um, this is, I think, an expensive mascara, but if you want it for a really long time, you would have this. It just keeps going and going and going, and I really did like it. I actually have a sample that I recently received from this, which I'm very happy to have. Would I buy this again? Mm, I'm not sure because I'm not someone who is so hell-bent on having high-end mascaras, but if I had like a sample of it, I'd be all about it. Alright, couple of makeup products that I'm decluttering. I'm getting rid of the Model Co. Bronze Shimmer Bronzer. This just doesn't work for my skin tone. It has like these like flecks of gold glitter, and I'm not about that bronzing life, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. And then the Physicians Formula uh, Reveria Sand Bronzer, um, like shimmer brick strip thing. I'm also going to get rid of this. I am not in need for eyeshadow. I'm not going to use this as a bronzer. I'm not going to use this as a highlighter. So I am just don't really have a use for it. Even though it's a decent product, I just don't use it. So I'm going to go ahead and say bye to it. Now, the other thing we're saying goodbye to is the NYX Lip Primer. This, um was drying my lips out, like making them very crusty, very chapped, so I will not push myself to use it. Got it for free anyway, so saying goodbye. Now we're on to brushes. For a majority of these brushes, they're just things that either don't work for me or are really old and I don't actually use them. So that's really all it is. I'm just going to kind of go through them and show them to you, but not spend a lot of time talking about them. They all basically have like the same reason for me getting rid of them. I have these three random brushes. Um, I have no idea the company or where they come from, but I don't need them. Uh, I'm getting rid of both of these Sonia Kashuk brushes. They never really appealed to me or really were that impressive. I'm getting rid of both of these double-ended brushes. I don't use double-ended brushes. I think they have a good purpose, but just not for me. And these ones in particular, neither side I find very helpful for my needs. Getting rid of these two brushes as well. One of these are a crown brush. Other one, I have no idea where it came from. Getting rid of this like paintbrush, Visanti brush, no need for that. Also getting rid of the Eco Tools brush, have no use for this. But then I have this, again, this It Cosmetics double-ended brush. It doesn't really do anything for me and I don't really use it for anything in particular. Um, I have like 15 different of like of these versions of slanted eyeliner brushes and I have no use for that many and I don't really ever use them so I'm getting rid of both of these. Uh, I'm getting rid of this Sephora uh, brow brush. Fun fact, I used to use this brow brush to literally line my eyes and it's like a painful brush. It's a very coarse, not soft brush and it used to like hurt, but I would still line my eyes with it for probably like a solid two years. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, I have this Morphe brush that I really have no use for. It's too big for my eyes. I'm um, getting rid of this. I don't ever really use this. My mom bought it for me thinking it'd be like a fun thing because she knew I used beauty sponges, but it just doesn't ever really work. Uh, I've got this Modern Minerals brush that I have like four or five of this size and I don't really ever use these, so I'm getting rid of this one. I never use my e.l.f. angled contour brush, so that's going. Then I have two of the Harry Potter like wizard brushes from Storybook Cosmetics. Um, I'm getting rid of these because both of these when they came to me were very misshapen compared to the pictures. So I emailed them and asked about it and they sent me two replacements of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these. And then the last one that I have is this Birchbox brush. Um, this is another brush that I was using and I liked a lot and I was using it as like a setting brush um, for my setting powder and it just like become, became super misshapen. So if you have any recommendations for a good like setting powder brush, let me know in the comments below. I don't want to spend a ton of money on it, but I am looking for a good one because right now I don't have a great one and I'm kind of not liking the way my setting powder is looking. But these brushes are just junk. This is the second or third 
third one of these that I've had that has just like fallen apart. So don't recommend. All right, moving on to another category that I have made a lot of progress in, it would be my skincare. I've really been trying to work through like samples and mini versions of things so that way I can kind of go back into my normal skincare routine. The first thing I have are these Shiseido facial cottons. These are amazing. I cut some of them in half for my toner and then I leave whole ones to remove my makeup with. Very big fan of these. I also use the Belief the True Cream Aqua Bomb. This I have to use on my neck only because when I was using it on my face, it's way too rich and causes me to break out. But as a neck cream, it works great. Would I buy it for that reason? No, but I will finally have a use for these samples. I'm actually working on my second one of these for my neck as well. Um, I also use the Pixie, the Glow Tonic To Go. It's an exfoliating toner pad. I don't think this is worth it. I'd rather just use a regular old toner and then exfoliate my face normal. I think this is a lot of packaging when it's unnecessary for what it can do. Uh, I also use the Clinique Foaming Sonic Facial Soap, wasn't impressed. The Sephora Instant Moisture Plus Cream, I really like the smell of this. Um, but again, with something like this, I'd wanna try a pot of it to see if I actually would like it long term. Um, I wish that they would throw something like this into their Sephora Play Box because I feel like that would be a good use of the Sephora line. I don't think their makeup is as competitive for the Sephora line, but I think their skincare could rival a lot of other brands. Um, then we have the Face Soap and Clarity Vitamin C Facial Wash from Soap and Glory. Didn't like the scent of this. Plus, I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick up on it on camera. This also has these like pink beads in it, which one of you guys told me when I talked about it in a Bath and Body Works trash talk that the little like useless plastic beads are no longer um, allowed in products. This was a recent thing that I got. So I don't know if that only applies to US brands, I'm not sure, but for that reason alone, I wouldn't buy it because I just don't understand the point of those little beads. I just don't get it, they don't do anything. They just like move around your face awkwardly and then they like, I don't know, they just, they're dumb. So I don't like it for that reason, plus the scent was just meh. So I'm glad I had a sample of it because I was very tempted to buy a full size and I'm super glad that I didn't. I'm getting rid of the Kors Wild Rose Advanced Brightening Sleeping Facial. This either is expired or it's too rich for my face because it broke me out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it. Uh, I used the PX Prescriptive Super Line Preventer Eye Serum. No, didn't like this. It didn't really do anything for my face. I tried the Clinique Acne Solutions Acne Line Correcting Serum with salicylic acid. I had a breakout when I used this and it did nothing to combat the breakout. So I'd much prefer the Evology Blemish Serum over this. I used the Trilogy Age Proof COQ10 Booster Oil. Did nothing for me. I don't think my skin really reacts uh, at all to oil on my face, positive or negative, so I wouldn't buy it. Uh, I used the Glam Glow Glow Starter Mega Illuminating Moisturizer. One, this had a weird citrus scent that I wasn't a fan of. Two, it is really, I think, more of like a good primer than it is a moisturizer because it would make your skin look super glowy, which was very nice, but my skin felt not super moisturized and I don't have dry skin. I have like oily combo skin and this was like, I didn't feel like my face felt quenched which I don't know. So I just wasn't a fan of it, wouldn't buy it, wouldn't recommend it. I have the Origins Ginseng Energy Boosting Moisturizer. This is very pleasant, has a very pleasant citrus scent, but it has no SPF in it. So I don't think I would buy it for that reason because I know myself well enough to know that I'm not gonna go out of my way to put SPF on and then put on a moisturizer. It's just too many steps. I don't want all those steps. Uh, we have the All-in-One Egg Mellow Cream. This is supposed to be a collagen-infused firming moisturizer. It's a little thick. I feel like this would be maybe a, a good night cream. I was using it in the morning, and maybe it's meant more for nighttime, even though it does say that I can apply it um, AM and or PM, but I don't know. A little thick for me. I don't necessarily love it, but I do love this brand. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I also have the Origins Ginseng Refreshing Eye Cream to Brighten and Depuff. Don't really have a need for depuffing. This is like a weird silvery texture. It has like a clear, distinct, like highlighty type of um, element to it, but it's not the most amazing thing ever. Like it doesn't make, I don't have super pronounced dark circles, but it doesn't even really combat that. So I feel like if you had darker eye circles than I do, 
well, I don't know what's gonna do for you. So I wouldn't recommend this. I have another one of these that I'm working on right now, but it's nothing amazing. Last skincare thing that I have is the Yes to Cotton, the Comforting Paper Mask, ultra sensitive and allergy prone. Please know I have used many more sheet masks than this, but I have been collecting them in one of my Face Tory boxes so I can do a whole review, a follow up review on one of my Face Tory boxes. This, however, was garbage. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm getting spoiled by like Korean skincare sheet masks, but this felt super scratchy and cheap compared to those like $2 Korean sheet masks that I have been using. It didn't really help my skin. It wasn't anything special. So I, mm -mm, I'm going to say pass on this one because it just isn't great. All right, moving on to nail products. Um, I used up these Impress Blue, like, ribbon. Oh, I think these are really, really pretty. I like these a lot. I got two uses out of them. Um, fun fact, there are 30 nails in here and I don't have, um, like, av like I have pretty average shaped long nails. So I can use you know, basically two rounds out of these 30. I can find two matching sets for my nail type. So I think this is a good deal. And I really like this pattern. I think it was just really pretty. And I got a lot of compliments on my nails when I was wearing those. I'm also done with the Kiss Brush On Nail Glue. This is my favorite nail glue ever. Even though this has adhesive on the back of it, I do use these in conjunction with one another and I basically can wear these for two weeks if I wanted to. I typically take them off after a week and a half because I get antsy, but I really could keep them on for two weeks and it's because I pair these together. And this is the literally the easiest nail glue to use ever because it is basically like a nail polish bottle. So big fan of this. There are two nail polishes that I am getting rid of. The first is the Rufian um, Relic. This color makes me so mad because in the bottle, I freaking love it. But you paint your nails, it's a totally different color and it looks like complete junk. It just comes off as like this straight silver color, not at all taupey like what it looks like in the bottle. So we're breaking up, I'm done with it. Uh, I'm also getting rid of the Nails Ink Gel Effect. Um, this has Plasticier Technology, whatever that means. This is the shade uh, Lexington Gardens. It just doesn't look good with my skin tone. I like this color a lot, I like this formula a lot, but the color itself just doesn't go well with me and I'm, I just, I don't wanna use it anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it. All right, moving on to some body products. I used up the Secret Clinical Strength Solid Smooth, or Smooth Solid Fearlessly Fresh uh, deodorant. This stuff's my favorite, except for the fact that it has aluminum in it, but apparently, thanks to you guys, I'm gonna try my natural deodorant uh, this summer for like a week straight to see if my body can adjust to it, because apparently your body has to go through like a detox, but I don't wanna be the smelly teacher at school or the smelly person in general in like my everyday professional life, but during the summer, I can totally kick it as a smelly kid, doesn't bother me, so I'll try it then. Um, I also have the La Vanilla Laboratories Pure Vanilla Healthy Deodorant. Um, this stuff is terrible. It's terrible because the packaging kept like breaking on me. It wouldn't roll up, it wouldn't roll down, like kept getting stuck on the top. Like it just was a lot of effort for this and it didn't really have a, an effect on me. I wore it mostly at night. Uh, it just like didn't stop me, aside from me not even being smelly, it didn't really stop me from being like super sweaty, which I'm gonna want that as well. Not just like a scent thing, but I also don't wanna be dripping armpit sweat every day, so I wouldn't buy this again. Um, we have the Bonjour Whipped Cream from Beauty and the Beast Collection from Fortune Cookie Soap. Yeah, this is like a weird lime minty scent. Wouldn't get this scent again, but I always like their whipped creams. And I have the Versace Bright Crystal. I'm really proud of myself for using up a full bottle of perfume. I have since moved on to like the mother of all perfume bottles. It's like a two ounce bottle of perfume from Coach. And that's kind of been like what I'm hoping I can make a really big dent in um, throughout the summer because it's, it's an old Coach perfume. Like I've had it for a long time and I just need to like get some progress on it. But this is like one of my favorite scents of life. Moving on to some shower products. I used up a ginger scalp care from the body shop this to me is hands down my favorite dandruff shampoo I think it is really effective on my hair without damaging or drying out my scalp so big fan of it um, I use the Pantene full and strong flexible conditioner this stuff is really interesting this is a really thick 
conditioner like feels like a hair mask thick which made me have to use very little of it to be able to cover and coat my entire hair which very much extended the life of this bottle I was a big fan of it I would buy it again I do think I have another one of this exact full and strong conditioner um, but I'm not working on it right now you guys know I have a pretty disturbingly large back stock of Pantene because it's wicked easy to coupon. Um, if you're ever like couponing through CVS or Walgreens, they always have like three, you can get like three of these for down to like, I think $4 at one point I paid for three of these. So it's wicked easy to coupon, hence why I have a big back stock, but now I'm on like a severe no buy for shampoo and conditioner. Um, I have the raw sugar body wash, raw coconut and mango. This is um, from cold press. This Oh my God, I love the scent of this. This to me smells like a straight up authentic coconut. I, if I didn't have so many body washes, I would probably want to buy this right away. I got it in a Target box. You can get this at Target. I just, this is an amazing summer scent and I really wish I hadn't used it as quickly as I did. Um, the only thing it, you should know about it is it kind of has a thinner texture than other body washes I've used, but it still creates a really rich lather to rub on your body. So it just, Mm, this stuff was good. Um, I used up two fortune cookie soaps. Um, I'm really hoping to really deplete this population soon so I can stop using these and go back to like regular body soaps. But until then, I'm gonna keep trucking. All right, we come down to my last two items, which impressed with you if you've made it this far in my video. But I have the Glade starter kit. Um, this is like some weird contraption that you're supposed to be able to like take out these bottles and like put in this so it makes it easy to spray. I don't know, it was $1.90 at um, Walgreens when I bought this. This scent was just your average cotton scent. I wouldn't necessarily buy this again, um, but we used it. And then I have the Ollie Perfect Women's Multi Chewy Gummy Vitamins. These are delicious, I recommend them always. They are so delicious. All right guys, that was a ton of stuff but we've made it through. That was my latest trash talk. Um, as always, I'd love to hear from you guys to hear what you've been using up. If you use any of these products, what your thoughts on them were, and I will talk to you in my next video real soon. Bye.